good morning students i hope you all are safe and well at your home so this video is for the students of class 9 subject science chapter number 15 that is improvement in food resources it's your lecture number 6 so today topics to be discussed in this lecture are fish production and bee keeping so students the last lecture we discussed about cattle farming and poultry farming under animal husbandry right so today we will be proceeding towards fish production before fish production let us discuss about fish fish is a cheap source of animal protein for our food number 1 it is cheap in nature and number 2 it is a source of animal protein for our food so this was about fish so what is fish production fish production refers to capturing and culturing of fish as a source of edible animal protein for us okay the fishes they are captured and after capturing they are cultured why because it is a source of edible animal protein for us edible means which we can eat easily because fish is a source of animal protein so they are captured and cultured so this is called as fish production so are you clear about this now the question arises in our mind that what are the ways of obtaining fish basically there are two ways of obtaining fish number 1 is capture fishing and number 2 is culture fishery these are the two ways of obtaining fish so what is capture fishing when fishes are obtained from natural resources okay that is called as capture fishing and second is culture fishery when the fishes are obtained by fish farming that is called as culture fishery so these are the two ways of obtaining fish one question normally arises from this part what are the ways of obtaining fish so you can write down about capture fishing and culture fishery easily now students there are two important terms in this fish production number one term is aquaculture and number two term is mary culture so let us discuss these two terms first so what is aquaculture aquaculture it is also called as aqua farming okay it is one and the same thing it is a farming of salt water and fresh water organisms like fin fish crustacean mollusk and aquatic plants means farming of those fishes or those organisms takes place which live in salt water and fresh water it includes fin fish means the fishes which have fins crustacean mollusk the crustacean mollusk basically we will study about mollusk in detail in diversity chapter so there we will understand what are mollusk and next is aquatic plants you are familiar with this aquatic plants so this farming is called as aquaculture it deals with farming of salt water and fresh water organisms second is mary culture mary culture is basically a specialized branch of this aquaculture which involves the cultivation of marine organisms okay listen carefully aquaculture was related with salt water and fresh water organisms but mary culture is related to marine organisms means the organisms which live in marine water so it involves the cultivation of marine organisms for food and 
other products in the open ocean. So that is called as mariculture. The name indicates marine organisms. So are you clear about these two terms? Now students, let us discuss about marine fisheries. Means the fishes which live in marine water. So what are the examples of those marine fisheries? Popular marine fish varieties include pomfret, tuna, mackerel, bombay duck and sardines. These are the various examples of marine fisheries. Okay. Now the question arises how these marine fishes they are located. The marine fishes means the fishes which live in marine water, they are located either through satellites or eco sounders. Okay, with the help of satellites and with the help of eco sounders, the marine fishes, they are being located. And they are captured using fishing nets. Okay, there are nets available which are used for capturing the fishes. Those are called as fishing nets. So with the help of those nets, the marine fisheries, they are captured. Now, there are some marine fishes which are of high economic value. Means the fishes from which we get benefit. So what are the examples? It includes finned fishes like mullets, bhetki, pearl sports and shellfish such as prawns, mussels and oysters as well as seaweed. So these fishes, either the finned fishes or the shellfishes, they are of high economic value. So you need to learn the examples of finned fishes and examples of shellfishes as well. Okay. Now there is a very interesting point to note that oysters. Oysters, they are one of the marine fishes which are cultivated for the pearls they make. Okay. This is a very important point. So from which fish we get pearls? It is oysters. So this is picture. It shows oyster from which the pearls are obtained. You can see from the diagram. These beautiful pearls, they are obtained through oysters. You might be familiar with this. In Hindi, we say moti. Now, after the marine fisheries, let us discuss about inland fisheries. Inland fisheries include capture fishing from freshwater resources and brackish water resources. Means the fishes are captured either through freshwater or from brackish water. Now the question arises, what do you mean by freshwater resources and brackish water resources? Freshwater resources include rivers, canals, lakes, reservoirs, tanks, ponds, etc. These are the various freshwater resources from which inland fisheries are obtained. And what is brackish water? Brackish water is basically saline water that flows from and gets mixed with fresh water. Means what we can say in common words, it is a mixture of fresh water and saline water. That is called as brackish water. So what are the various examples of brackish water resources? They are estuaries and lagoons. You might have studied about these in SST. Okay, so from these freshwater resources or brackish water resources, 
the inland fisheries they are obtained or captured now there is a very interesting point about the fish culture it is done sometimes in combination with the crop so that fishes are grown in the water in the paddy field okay that is a very interesting thing to know about the fish culture and more intensive fish farming it can be done in composite fish culture system now let us discuss about composite fish culture so what is composite fish culture basically this composite fish culture is used for fresh water fish farming okay it is commonly used for fresh water fish farming now what happens in this culture in this system five or six fish species with different food habits are cultured together in a single pond so as to increase the yield of fishes means what happens in this there are different species of fishes okay and those different species of fishes they have different food habits each species of fish contains different food habit from the other so those fishes they are cultured together in a single pond and why it is done so as to increase the yield of fish so this type of culturing or this type of system is called as composite fish culture so are you clear about this now what are the advantages of this composite fish culture number 1 fishes do not compete with each other for space and nutrition why because different species of the fish with different food habits they are cultured together in a single pond so they are not competing with each other for space and nutrition so that is one of the advantage of this composite fish culture number 2 advantage is that the fishes live in distinct zones distinct means different zones inside the pond okay inside the pond zones are there different zones in which the fishes live so that is a second advantage of composite fish culture now what are those three different zones first zone is surface zone that is present at the surface second zone is middle zone means present at the middle and the third and the last zone is bottom zone means which is present at the bottom so these are the three different zones in which the fishes live so what are the example katla and silver carp they live mostly in surface zone means surface feeder they feed at the surface next is rohu and grass crab they live in the middle zone means the column feeder and last that is mrigal and common carp they live in bottom zone that is bottom feeder so this is an example of fishes living in different zones so these are the advantages of composite fish culture now there will be disadvantage also you know that every coin has two sides so what is the disadvantage of composite fish culture one disadvantage of composite fish culture is that many of these fish they breed only during monsoon season okay they breed only during monsoon season so that is the disadvantage of this composite fish culture system so are you clear about this composite fish culture its advantages and disadvantages normally one question arises from this part so now students the last topic of this chapter is beekeeping 
now very important question that arises is apiculture so what is apiculture it is a practice of beekeeping that practice of beekeeping is called as apiculture now this apiculture or beekeeping is a very low investment activity means this activity requires very low investment which involves rearing care and management of honey bee okay now the question arises what do we get from honey bee very easy answer we get honey wax etc from honey bee now let us discuss few examples of bee varieties indigenous bee varieties means indian bee varieties what are the examples number 1 is apis carana indica that is a scientific name and what is the common name of this indian bee that is the first example second example is apis dorseta again this is a scientific name and the common name is rock bee third example is apis floria again this is a scientific name and the common name is little bee these are the various examples of indigenous bee varieties now students there is a very interesting italian variety that is apis mellifera it is an italian variety of bee so these are the various examples you should know and these varieties of bee they are used for the commercial production of honey so students you are familiar with the various varieties of bee whether it is indigenous bee variety or italian bee variety so now the question arises what are the desirable characters of those bee varieties which are suitable for honey production so what are those desirable characters number 1 they should have high honey collecting capacity okay the collecting capacity of honey should be high that is one of the desirable character of those bee varieties number 2 is they should sting less okay they should sting less and number 3 is they should stay in the bee hive for longer durations or for longer periods of time because if they stay for longer durations in that bee hive the production of honey will automatically will be more and the fourth is they should breed very well the breeding is a very important factor that decides the yield of honey so these are the various characters of bee varieties which are suitable for honey production now the question arises what are the factors that determine the quality and taste of honey first factor is pasturage the availability of sufficient amount of pasturage means number of pasturage so what is pasturage it is the flowers from which bees collect nectar and pollen so that is the number one factor that determines the quality and taste of honey second is type or kind of flowers which is available to the bees for nectar and pollen collection first was number of flowers second is type or kind of flowers so these are the two factors which determines the quality as well as taste of honey so are you clear about this so students what is your homework for today's lecture you will have to do the following questions in your notebook question number 1 is discuss the implications of the following statement it is interesting to note that poultry is india's most efficient converter of low fiber food stuff which is unfit for human consumption into highly nutritious animal protein food 
so you will have to discuss this statement question number two is how are fishes obtained question number three is what are the advantages of composite fish culture question number four is what are the desirable characters of bee varieties suitable for honey production question number five is what is pasturage and how is it related to honey production and question number six is how do good animal husbandry practices benefit the farmers Question number seven is for increasing the production. What is common in poultry, fisheries, and beekeeping? And last question, question number eight. How do you differentiate between capture fishing, mariculture, and aquaculture? So these are the following questions which you have to answer in your notebook. Now, students. I would be discussing the homework solutions of lecture number five. Question number one was, which method is commonly used to improve cattle breeds and why? Answer: Cross breeding is generally the best method adopted for improving the cattle breed quality. Now you will have to explain this cross breeding also with an example. So what is cross breeding? in this method breeding is between two cattle breeds which results in a new improved variety of cattle breed or offspring and what is the example the cross between foreign breeds such as jersey brown swiss and indian breeds such as red sindhi sahiwal produces a new variety having the qualities of both the breeds so this was the answer of question number 1 question number 2 was what are the benefits of cattle farming so this is a very easy question answer benefits of cattle farming are number 1 milch cattle or dairy cattle are used for the production of milk number 2 drought cattle are used for labor which is connected with agriculture like tilling irrigation and carting and number 3 cattle farming increases the overall income of the farmers and raise their standard of living so these are the benefits of cattle farming you can write in your own words also question number 3 was what management practices are common in dairy and poultry farming so what you will have to do in this question you will have to write those common practices of management which are there in dairy and poultry farming so what are those common management practices it include shelter feeding caring for animal health so we will have to explain these points in one or two lines shelter dairy animals and poultry birds require proper shelter that should be well designed hygienic shelter number 2 feeding to get good yield of food product proper feed is provided to dairy animals and poultry birds number 3 caring for animal health animals and birds must be protected from various disease which are caused by bacteria viruses or fungi so this was the answer of question number 3 question number 4 was what are the differences between broilers and layers and in their management so you will have to differentiate between broilers and layers plus in their management as well so answer broilers what is broiler the poultry bird raised for meat purpose that is called as broiler now you can write about the food broilers feed on protein rich adequate fat food the levels of vitamin a and k 
is kept high in the poultry feeds. Now coming to layers. So what is layer? The egg laying poultry bird is called as layer. Means the poultry bird which is raised for laying eggs. The housing, environmental and nutritional requirements of broilers vary from those of egg layers. Layers require proper lightning and enough space. So these are the differences between broilers and layers and in their management. That's all for today's lecture. Thank you class.